Hello everyone, welcome to the class on Cardiac Physiology. In this video, I am going to explain basic anatomy of heart, blood circulation and physiological terms like cardiac output, stroke volume, preload, afterload and heart sounds. Understanding this physiology is important to understand pathophysiological diseases in a heart. Let us start. Now, this is a brief diagram explaining about circulation of blood. Now, as you all know, heart has got four chambers. The top chambers are known as atria. The bottom chambers are known as ventricles. This is right side, right atria and right ventricle. Whereas similarly, you have left atria and left ventricle are there. Now, the reason why the color here blue depicted is because on the right side, we have deoxygenated blood. Whereas on the left side, we have oxygenated blood. That is the reason why the color is shown differently. Now, let us start from the right side. From all the body parts uses blood and oxygen is taken up by this tissues and everything. Hence, it gives deoxygenated blood. Deoxygenated blood gets into the heart with the help of vena cava. Vena cava carries all the deoxygenated blood and the blood gets into right atria. So, deoxygenated blood gets into right atria. When this atria contracts, the blood comes down to right ventricle. This is what happens. Now, after that, when this right ventricle contracts, this deoxygenated blood moves from here to lungs. Why lungs? Because in the lungs, you have gases exchange takes place. Gas exchange takes place and deoxygenated blood is converted to oxygenated blood. Now, this purified oxygenated blood gets into the heart from here. It gets into left atria. When left atria contracts, again the blood comes down to left ventricle. When left ventricle contracts, the blood gets into iota. From this iota, the blood reaches to every part of our body. It goes to all the parts of our body. Again, all the parts of our body utilizes blood. Again, it becomes deoxygenated. And again, deoxygenated blood is carried to right atria. The cycle continues. This is what typically we call it as cardiac cycle. So, this block diagram briefly explains how the blood circulation occurs. Now, moving further. See, so, this one is a bit complicated diagram with all anatomical parts. Whatever I have explained in the previous slide, this is the extension of that particular slide. Now, understand the parts and everything. Similarly, this side is right side. You have right atria and right ventricle. Now, this side you have left atria and left ventricle. Let us come from the beginning. Now, uh, whatever I have explained about vena cava, we have two kinds of vena cavas are there. Inferior vena cava carries deoxygenated blood from lower body parts, whereas superior vena cava carries blood from the upper parts of the body. From neck, head, the deoxygenated blood carried by superior vena cava, whereas from lower parts, inferior vena cava carries blood. Now, this blood gets into this vena cavas. From vena cava, see, the blood is flowing into this right atria. So, when right atria contracts, from, from here, the blood will be moving down to right ventricle. Now, atria and ventricle are separated by special type of valves. These valves are known as atrioventricular valves. AV means, A means atria, V means ventricle, atrioventricular valve. They are also known as tricuspid valves. Tricuspid valve, the other name for atrioventricular is tricuspid valve. So, see, this valve, the job of this valve is it enables unidirectional flow of the blood. That means blood moves from atria to ventricle. That's it, unidirectional flow is enabled by these valves. Now, once the blood gets into this right ventricle, when right ventricle contracts, the blood moves from here to this chamber. Look at this. This is pulmonary artery. Pulmonary means lung, artery to that place the blood moves. Again, this is covered by a particular valve known as pulmonary valve. Again, this pulmonary valve enables the flow of blood in unidirection. That means from right ventricle to pulmonary artery, the blood moves. Now, from this pulmonary artery, the blood reaches to lungs. Now, what happens in the lungs? In the lungs, gases exchange occurs. Due to that gases exchange, deoxygenated blood is converted to oxygenated. Once it is oxygenated, the oxygenated blood moves from here to this place. This is left pulmonary vein. 
this vein carries oxygenated blood to left atria this top place now when this left atria contracts blood from this left atria comes down to left ventricle again this is covered with atrioventricular valve also known as mitral valve you know in this case uh, this a uh, right atrioventricular valve is known as tricuspid valve whereas left atrioventricular valve is known as mitral valve and blood comes down to this left ventricle so this part is completely oxygenated blood now when this left ventricle contracts from here blood will be moving to this place this is called aorta and again you have a valve called as aortic valve so this aorta gets the blood and from this aorta blood will be going to each and every part of the body now again the same story once it gets into the body parts all the body will be utilizing oxygen again it gets back to veins from vena cava again the circulation continues to happen take some time go through the diagram you will get everything clearly i need to mention one more thing see you need to understand the differences between arteries and veins most of the students uh, think that arteries contain oxygenated blood veins contain deoxygenated blood it is not true always because we have see just now what we what we have seen we have seen about pulmonary veins and pulmonary artery see this pulmonary artery though it is an artery it is carrying deoxygenated blood because it is getting to lungs where gas exchange occurs whereas this pulmonary vein though it is known as vein it is carrying oxygenated blood so what you need to understand is you need to think about this veins the job of vein is always veins carry the blood towards heart whether it is superior vena cava or inferior vena cava they are taking blood to heart now what is happening here left pulmonary vein what is that pulmonary vein doing it is carrying blood from the lungs to heart so this is what happens here veins always carry blood towards heart whereas artery carries the blood away from the heart it is taking blood away from the heart uh, this aorta are taking blood away from the heart similarly pulmonary artery what is it doing from the heart it is taking away the blood towards lungs so this is this is how you need to understand structurally anatomically certain differences are there because when heart contracts all the blood with pressure gets into artery to withhold that art pressure arteries will have well built muscular walls whereas veins they do not have it anatomically this is what is the difference but physiologically remember veins always carries blood towards heart whereas arteries carries always blood away from the heart so this is how the blood circulation occurs now look at this one let us start from here ventricular diastole ventricular diastole means ventricles are dilating when ventricles are dilating blood from atria falls down from right as well as left the blood will be falling down next comes atrial systole atrial systole means contraction of this atria when atria contracts blood will come down understand this thing even though when atria is not contracting with ventricular diastole blood comes down to ventricular chambers so it is not only atria which is pumping blood to ventricles even ventricular diastole creates a kind of negative pressure which ca which causes the blood to fall down to ventricle now after that when atrial systole occurs when ventricle contracts occurs then also blood falls down to ventricular chambers now after after that there occurs something called as isovolumetric ventricular contractions all the valves will be closed and ventricle contraction occurs then because valves are closed no blood goes out of the heart this is called isovolumetric that means the volume of blood is not changing isovolumetric after that you have a ventricular systole wherein ventricles will contract blood will be going out from right side it goes to lungs from left side it goes to aorta and body parts this is how circulation again depicted now after this uh, we we keep listening to certain things called as pulmonary circulation and systemic circulation so whatever the blood is carried to the lung and the blood coming out of the lung is known as pulmonary circulation this pulmonary artery carries blood to the lung wherein oxygenation occurs and pulmonary vein vein get takes that blood from the lungs to heart this is called pulmonary circulation the rest of the thing is known as systemic circulation in pharmacology we keep hearing these words the blood will get into systemic circulation that means it is getting only here the drug will not get into lungs or pulmonary circulation so this is about brief 
anatomy physiology of heart and how the circulation occurs next let us understand certain things like cardiac output now let me explain with the help of uh, diagrams itself so that you will understand well give me some time okay let us understand about this thing yeah now let us see the word cardiac output cardiac output now understand this word cardiac means heart output means what is coming out of the heart what comes out of the heart blood comes out of the heart look at this this part the blood is coming out of the heart so cardiac output literally means the amount of blood which comes out of, comes out of the heart per minute in one minute of time how much of blood is coming out of the heart is known as cardiac output whether it is going to lungs or whether it is coming to aorta and going to all parts of the body now if you calculate to this aorta certain amount of blood is coming and to lungs certain amount of blood is coming again this cardiac output is given by stroke volume into heart rate what do you mean by stroke one contraction is known as stroke volume means with one contraction how much volume of blood is coming out of the heart is known as stroke volume there is a difference look at this cardiac output is per minute stroke volume is per stroke with every stroke for example with every stroke of this left ventricle in aorta in a healthy individual 70 ml of blood comes out so the stroke volume is 70 ml in healthy individual what is the heart rate approximately 70 so totally what how much it will become 4900 or 5 liters so this is what is cardiac output that means per minute 5 liters of blood will be coming out of the heart it is given by stroke volume and heart rate so these things will measure the efficiency of heart now after this let us see the other terms like we have some some of the important terms like preload and afterload let us understand these words in detail now pre means before load means volume what before before contraction whatever the volume of blood is there in the ventricle is known as preload this is also known as end diastolic volume see in heart there is a rhythm first systole comes and then diastole comes systole diastole systole diastole everything will be there so diastole is followed by systole let us understand this thing now ventricle will have certain amount of blood right whenever contraction is there the volume will get into this part and so the blood volume reduces it is not that whenever the contraction occurs the total volume of blood will go vanishes no certain amount of blood remains inside even after the contraction so that is what is called as preload that means ventricle contracts blood goes away after that ventricle dilates after the dilation whatever the volume is left inside this ventricle is called as end diastolic volume that is nothing but preload that means after diastole before systole whatever the volume of blood is present inside heart is known as preload now preload is majorly determined by this venous return that is what decides preload now after that let us say about afterload now afterload uh, look at this one you have oxygenated blood inside this left ventricle when contraction occurs the blood pumped into iota right now afterload means the pressure that must be generated by this left ventricle in order to pump this blood into iota i'll repeat this repeat this the pressure that must be generated by this left a ventricle in order to pump the blood into iota is known as afterload let us see with uh, let us understand this concept with certain uh, statistical uh, uh, measures you know you know the blood pressure is 120 by 80 this blood pressure is measured at iota 120 is during systole 80 is during diastole that means when heart contracts more amount of blood is pumped here because the volume is more pressure will be more during diastole the volume will be taken away so the pressure comes down now after that again contracts and then uh, the left ventricle contracts and then blood is pumped into this iota now understand this now after contraction during diastole here the pressure is 80 mm of hg now already you have certain amount of pressure is there inside this iota so if you want to pump blood from this left ventricle you need to generate pressure which is greater than 80 then only you can pump the blood from here to iota 
so that pressure is known as afterload the pressure that must be exerted by left ventricle so that it can pump the blood into aorta if it becomes 90 what happens this left ventricle has to generate pressure more than 90 if you remember hypertension is is anything more than or equal to 140 by 90 look at this systole is raised from 120 to 140 whereas diastole 80 to 90 10 units increase causes hypertension why because if you increase this if it becomes 90 the pressure will be on this left ventricle because it has to generate pressure more than 90 that means you are putting pressure on these ventricular walls which will damage the heart so that is what is afterload is now finally uh, we'll see about the sounds see the sounds are basically because of valve closures you you happen to hear two types of sounds lub dub sounds the lub sound is because of a tricuspid valve and mitral valve closures when heart contracts when ventricle contracts both these valves will get closed and that gives a sound called as lub whereas dub sound is because of pulmonary valve and aortic valve when these two valves close you will get a sound called dub sound so this is briefly about cardiac physiology thank you for watching this video